Welcome back to Hasna's Anatomy and now we'll discuss the shaft of the femur. Now the shaft of the femur according to me is quite complex, not only in its bony features but due to its attachments. However, Hasna's Anatomy is all about making stuff easy and today I'll make it quite easy for you and I really hope you understand. So over here I have portrayed the shaft of femur in a more diagrammatic form because I believe that's a more easier way that I can explain this to you. So overall, let's see the shaft first. Always remember anteriorly is going to be the intertrochanteric line and posteriorly will be this prominent ridge. So now we know that this is anterior. The shaft is going to be convex forwards and you can see that the shaft is basically going to be really long. The most important part or the point number one in the shaft's bony feature is that the middle part of the shaft is the most narrowest part of the shaft. And when we view the shaft posteriorly, we have a number of important bony features. It's quite long. So I'll just show it in a more diagrammatic form and then we'll get back to the bone. So firstly, what's important for all of you to know is that the shaft of the femur is divided into an upper one third, a middle one third, which is the narrowest and the lower one third. Let's first talk about the middle one third of the shaft. This is anterior. This is an interior view, this is a posterior view, all right? So let me write it over here as well, anteriorly, and this is posteriorly. So the shaft is basically, let's talk about, we have to begin by talking about the middle one third of the shaft, all right? So this part, which is the most narrow. Now the middle one third of this shaft consists of three borders and three surfaces, while the upper and lower thirds of the shaft consist of four borders and four surfaces. The middle one third of the shaft consists of which borders? Obviously, there's going to be a medial border and a lateral border and posteriorly it has a posterior border which is known as the linea aspera as well. So, middle third of the shaft consists of a medial border, a lateral border and the posterior border also known as the linea aspera which is very important. What is the significance of the linea aspera is that it has medial and lateral lips. So obviously, if this is the medial side and this is the lateral side, this is the medial lip of the linea aspera and this is the lateral lip of the linea aspera. So it has medial and lateral lips. The linea aspera is important and significant because of the attachment it has to give. So this was the middle third of the shaft. Now let's view it on the bone as well. So this is the middle third of the shaft anteriorly. Anteriorly, there is no such border. Mostly the borders are the medial border because the head is over here. So I'm going to label this as the medial border and the lateral border. Posteriorly, you'll see this roughened ridge is known as the linea aspera or the posterior border of the middle third of your femur's shaft. Due to the borders, the femur is divided into a medial surface, a lateral surface and obviously an anterior surface. So the three borders and three surface of the middle one third of the shaft of the femur are explained. Now let's talk about the upper and lower third of the shaft. As the linea aspera goes above, it splits or it diverges above to form two more borders. Hence in the upper one third, there are four borders rather than just three. And below, when it goes towards the lower one third, does a similar thing, it splits up to form two more borders in the lower third of the shaft. Hence, the middle one third of your entire shaft is only carrying three borders, three surfaces, but upper and lower are carrying four borders and four surfaces because the linea aspera splits up. Let's talk about the upper third. This is all occurring posteriorly. For every third of your bone, you'll shaft, you will have to give a medial and lateral border and you'll have to add additional borders. So, in the case of upper one third, there is no posterior border, rather it has become, suppose this is the medial side and this is the lateral side. Medially, we all know is the head of the femur. Let's see it over here. All right. As you can see that the linea aspera has split up into this part and this part. These two parts have names. You should know the names of these borders and how do we derive those names? The intertrochanteric line anteriorly crosses the 
this of the lesser trochanter as the spiral line. So you can see there is a spiral line here. Now the spiral line is the medial lip of linear aspera extended above. So the medial lip of linear aspera comes all the way above and joins the spiral line. So the one of the borders of the upper one third is known as the spiral line. The border that lies more medially. And the border that lies more laterally, now this is very important, this is the, in the posterior part of your upper one third of the shaft is a rough tuberosity known as the gluteal tuberosity which has to give attachment to the gluteus maximus. This is the medial lip of the gluteal tuberosity obviously because this is the head and this is the lateral lip of the gluteal tuberosity. The lateral lip of the gluteal tuberosity is going to be joining the lateral lip of the linea aspera and this lateral lip of the gluteal tuberosity is your fourth border. So in the upper one third we have what borders medial lateral by default and the spiral line and the lateral lip of the gluteal tuberosity which is why we have how many surfaces the anterior surface and posteriorly we have the medial surface the lateral surface and the posterior surface. Now let's talk about the lower third. Similarly, in the lower third, also the linea aspera's medial and lateral lips split up. Now this is easier because they basically split up to form the medial and lateral supracondylar lines. All right, supracondylar lines. What does that mean? Because this is known as the condyle, the lower end. The prominent ridges or lines above the condyles are known as the supracondylar lines. So it's very easy, as you can see that. The medial lip of the linea aspera is going down to extend into the medial supracondylar line and the lateral lip of the linea aspera you can see is splitting up and going to form the lateral supracondylar line. So overall how many borders and surfaces it has? It has obviously the medial and the lateral border which are quite ill defined forming an anterior surface, a medial surface, a lateral surface and obviously this is known as the popliteal surface because the popliteal fossa's floor will be formed over here that we'll discuss later. So this was a brief overview of the bony features of the shaft of the femur. Although it was quite complex but let's go over it one more time with the bone. So this is the shaft of the femur as you can see in its middle one third it has a medial border, a lateral border and a posterior border known as a linea aspera. The upper one third of the femur consists of a medial border, a lateral border and posteriorly where the linea aspera splits up, it has a two more borders, one known as the spiral line, one known as the lateral lip of the gluteal tuberosity, forming about four surfaces, the anterior, me lateral, medial and the posterior surface. In the lower part of the shaft of the femur, you can see that there is a a medial supracondylar line and a lateral supracondylar line which form the anterior medial lateral surface along with that a posterior surface. That's all you need to know for the shaft of the femur. In the next video, we'll discuss the attachments of the shaft.